<laughs> Good morning, oh there she is. Hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the neighborhood. I turned on the live and I realized I forgot to turn on the camera. So I had to run over there and turn on the camera. <laughs> and I didn't get back in time. It took me more than three seconds. It did, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. I held the fort for half a second. Good job. Good job. High five. High five. High five. <laughs> You gonna start that one? Oh yes, I am. Um, so I did not go to the gym today, and here's why. I think I'm gonna take a week off. Um, I I realized that I'm starting to kind of be blasé about my workouts, and I couldn't really figure out why. And I realized I thought about it. I have not taken any time off since 2016 when I had that major surgery. I've told you guys I had surgery in 2016. Right. And. When I did, I took, when I had surgery, I took like eight weeks off and I, cause I had to, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be so out of shape. It's going to be a disaster. And when I got back eight weeks after not working out, yes, my cardio was a little bit poor, more poor, poor. I don't know what the right, anyway, my cardio wasn't as good. Um, and it took me four to six weeks to get my cardio back, but my weightlifting, I thought was going to be really bad. And my doctors like, take it slow. Don't hurt yourself. So I did, and I found that within about two weeks, I was lifting exactly the same weight. So in taking eight weeks off in 2016, I didn't lose that much. It wasn't that big of a deal. And so fast forward to today, and I've been kind of blasé, and I'm not feeling it, and I feel like I have a lot to do for the R&R &R journey stuff that I want to get accomplished for you guys, get the you know things on the website, videos edited, and blogs written. And so I just decided, you know what? I'm going to take a week off. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. It's fine. So that's what I decided. So how was your workout? Because Russ doesn't take time off. Yeah, I should, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> my workout was good. It was a leg day. I did the cardio blitz before. So yeah, it was good. I had to do a little bit different order because people were on the apparatus size yeah. <laughs> that I wanted. Yeah, okay. I know that's not a word. But anyway, that I wanted. So I, uh, you know, altered my workout a little bit. And uh, You said a couple people tried to give you a hard time about me not being there. One person did and I had none of it. So I would have none of it, so it's all good. People are so opinionated, especially the, uh, you know, pound your chest men. Like, who? how dare she take time off? Right, right. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. Don't even want to hear it. So anyway, I'm taking some time off. Wanted to tell you a little bit about Friday. We did our speaking engagement. Of course, it decided to snow and be windy and yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was a tough and day, yeah. So we had a lot of people who ended up not coming because the weather was, was not as pleasant as it could have been. Mm -hmm. But we got some that showed up. We did. We had a small group that came and they were very engaged. They asked a lot of questions. They, you know, were very interested. So we had a really good time with that and that was, that was great. And the Whole Food, uh, not the Whole Food, that's not right, the Natural Food Ooh, Store, right. New York Natural Food Store, has asked us to come back and do the, do it again in April. So we're gonna we're working on finding a date, but we're gonna do the same talk. The your body can't count calories, and neither should you. We're right. gonna do the same talk in April to um, allow people who weren't able to come because of the weather to hopefully get to come who were interested. Right. Right. So look for that date. If you're not on our newsletter, definitely get on it so that you'll know. Um, thanks, Bridge. Right. Um, Definitely get on our newsletter so that you won't miss it. I know we put it on Facebook, but it doesn't always share it with everybody. So. And what was exciting, speaking about our newsletters, everybody that was at the event signed up for our newsletter. Every so, one of them. So they felt the information we were given was, was uh, worthy to have an, an email from us uh, once, once a week. A week. Yeah. yeah, so we're excited so that's about exciting. that. Yeah. Um, but let's get to the point of today's video. Um, I've been tagged a couple of different times um, recently, a few different times in a video that's circulating on Facebook, it's a, it's a um, sponsored advertisement thing right. by a Dr. Grundy and it, for his book called The Plant Paradox. And it's a very intense, emotional, oh my God, what you're eating is killing you right. um, kind of video. And the first time someone tagged me in it, they actually just tagged me in the video and said, hey, Robin, what do you think of this? And that's the one you may have seen my post where I said that I was um, edited for the first time. I wrote a really long response about here's what I think and here's some um, information that con that contradicts it, that's different to some doctors and that what I did believe they do? in. They deleted it. Shocking. I mean, within 10 minutes, they deleted it. And then I posted a comment because they left the tag and it, so it made it look like I hadn't responded to the tag. And so I wrote a comment back to the person who tagged me that said, hey, I replied to this, they deleted it. 
I don't know what the deal is. I'll, I'll send you my response via private message because obviously they don't want it, want my information here and what I had to share here. They deleted that too. Shocking. So that was my first experience with this guy and his stuff. And then um, over the weekend, I, and I've been asked a couple of different times about lectins and I've talked with individuals about lectins, but over the weekend, um, somebody posted it on his own timeline. So not on the actual timeline of Dr. Grundy and his book, but on his own timeline and he tagged me and he said, hey Robin, what do you think? And my first response was, this is really hyped. And anytime, and I, I posted something about this over the weekend too, anytime someone's trying to scare you into, oh my God, this is killing you, you need my supplement to live, right. I have issues with that. And no offense to used car salesmen out there, but it had a very used car salesman pitch to it. It did. Yes. And so that was my first response. And I told him, I'll look into it more um, and, and let you know. And so I did look into it and that was my exact response was first of all, the plants he's talking about are plants that humans have been eating for centuries. Yes. He's talking about beans and tomatoes and you know, things like that. And I'm like, that's crazy. If that stuff was deadly, we wouldn't exist. Humans right. wouldn't exist. That's, right. that's nuts. But I decided, I told him, I said, I don't want to just give you my opinion. I want to actually look up the science. So um, I did some research and I want to share with you what I found so that when you see this used car salesman of, you know, you need my supplement to live, you can... But, uh, right, by the way, in case you didn't catch what she just said, he's selling supplements and skincare products that are not cheap. To save I mean, us what, from plants. If you bought all his products, you'd be paying $8,000 a year. <laughs> so first let's talk about what is a lectin. Because that's what he's, he's, he's using this scare tactic that lectins are deadly. So let's figure out what first what are lectins. Lectins were first discovered in 1889 and they are a type of plant protein. So it's not even like a lectin is a thing. It's a whole series of things. It's like a, a different, different kinds of plant proteins. And many lectins are perfectly non-toxic. They're perfectly fine for you. Don't do any damage at all. The lectins in tomatoes, lentils, peas, chickpeas, fava beans, etc. They're fine. They just no issues to eat them. Right. No big deal. Now, there is one type of lectin that is a problem and that is found in kidney beans. And you're like, oh my God, but we eat kidney beans. Yes, it's okay. Don't freak out. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. The lectins that are in kidney beans are toxic. But if you boil them for at least 10 minutes, it destroys all the lectins. So, and you know, if you've ever eaten a kidney bean, you have to cook it for longer than 10 minutes right. for it to even be palatable. You can't eat it if it, you don't cook it for at least 10 minutes. So if you soak them for um, five hours and then boil them for 10 minutes, they're fine. If you just, if you don't soak them and you just cook them till they're edible, they're fine. Canned beans are fine. Mm -hmm. So no big deal. There's no science that shows that lectins are bad, but there's tons of science that shows that eating foods that contain them is good for us. So there was an incident with kidney beans in Japan. It's called the white kidney bean incident of 2006. And what happened was there was a TV show that suggested it was a good way to lose weight was to toast kidney beans for three minutes grind them in a coffee grinder and then sprinkle them over rice and ingest them. Ah. And if you do that, it gives you bloating, diarrhea, and vomiting right. because you don't kill the lectins. Toasting them, it doesn't work. Right. So apparently in Japan, there is a common like disclaimer on all dried beans, do not eat raw beans. So I'm gonna give you the same disclaimer. Right. Don't eat raw beans. Right. Cook your beans. Even if you cook, Duh. I mean, they're like a rock, aren't they? When yeah, you can't. You have. Yeah. That's why you need a coffee grinder. Right. Like, don't put don't beans in the coffee them and put them up, sprinkle them. Don't on do something. that. Don't do that with your beans. But so here's an interesting thing, though. Low doses of lectins may be de de beneficial for gut function and anti-tumor effect. When they take lectins, and we're talking about, you know, the, not the toxic ones, don't eat toxic lectins, but lectins from non-toxic foods like tomatoes, lentils, peas, chickpeas, fava beans, and they take that lectin and they put it in a petri dish with cancer and non-cancerous cells, the lectins can tell the difference and they can group the cancerous cells together and actually attack them. So, well, that's great in a petri dish, yay, right. but when you eat lectins, your body doesn't 
some of them don't get processed and they end up in your colon where they can do the same thing to colon cancer cells that I was looking at. And these, these stats, this information I'm giving you is from Dr. Greger from the How Not to Die book. Mm -hmm. And I really trust him because he actually gives the resources and the science. The science he yeah. doesn't just claim stuff. Right. And he also will point out when science is misused, which is quite often in and the nutritional did. industry. So he did point out that um, Dr. Grundy actually uses um, science and he twists it. And right. it, it's really actually kind of sad. And I did post the, the, the video on the tag that I got over the weekend. So I can, I'll share that on the r, r Journey page, the actual video where, where Dr. Greger basically says that um, Dr. Grundy is lying. Right. And he doesn't use the word lying, but no, he they makes never do. it very clear that right. it's not cool. Right. So um, some, some lectins, like those in peanuts and tomatoes, which are non-toxic to humans, do end up in the bloodstream. The body can process them. And while it's not shown to reduce cancer in humans directly, um, groups of humans that eat that kind of food, like are in the blue zone, which we've talked about before, live longer, are healthier, right. et cetera, et cetera. And we know that a whole food plant-based diet overall is just better for you. And we can't pinpoint why, but over and over and over it proves that the it science is. science proves it, right. And the other thing that's really very um, interesting is Big Pharma is looking at developing lectin-based drugs. <laughs> so what does that tell us? That's funny. If Big Pharma is trying to make money on it, then it might be, maybe it's uh, got value. Right, exactly. The other thing that's interesting and that they that I found is that Hispanic American Americans who are first generation live longer. They have a longer life expectancy than white Americans and black Americans, even though they have less access to health care. Mm -hmm. They are poor social economic status. They have a language deficiency. They don't. It's just they have all these reasons why they shouldn't live longer, but they right. do. And what they're finding is that they think that it's because of the amount of beans that they eat. And obviously they eat their beans cooked. Yes, they do. So that's a good thing. Um, and as they get more into the Western diet and they start reducing the beans and the corn and the tomatoes in their diet, they start having the same life expectancy as the average American. Right. So there's something about eating beans, corns, and tomatoes that are really good for us. It correlates to less cancer, less heart disease. It correlates with a longer life. It, I mean, to me, it's because we've spent a millennia eating that stuff, and mm -hmm. our body has become accustomed to that type of food and knows how to most utilize that type of food. Right. So when we add all the Western diet stuff that our body's like, what the heck is this? And it's scrambling to try to figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. So... Everything that I've found says that eating a half a cup of beans a day, which isn't even very that much beans, no. can really do positive things for us. So why don't we eat, why don't we eat beans? Why don't people eat beans? And the, when you ask people why they don't eat beans, they say, well, it gives me gas. So they've done some research on that. They studied gas. And I know we've talked about gas before, but I wanted to share it out. The science doesn't bear out that beans cause gas. Now, dairy does. And right. so does meat. Meat and dairy actually do increase gas. Right. So I know I love beans too, Bridge. They're yes. phenomenal. I actually made a chickpea rice soup, basically chicken noodle soup with Which, chickpeas. I'm just going to say this. It's really good. It turned out yummy. And I made um, veggie fajitas. Yes. Which and is I also made good. cauliflower buffalo Wings, things. If you want to call them. I don't know what they are, but buffalo. they were yummy. Yes, they were lovely. Too. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about gas. So. <laughs> For some people, beans cause the perception of more gas. Now, we all know that if you tell somebody that something does something, they perceive that it does, whether it really does or not. It's right. a human condition to be able to do that. So, but the people who say that it did cause more gas said that within three weeks, it, it they good. were back to their normal, whatever that is. And we've talked to you about um, how your gut flora has to get used to processing more of, of the vegetable yeah, and, and plants, plant yeah. protein and that takes a little bit of time mm -hmm. so <laughs> when the whole family's got gas then it's fine <laughs> that's, that's funny. right it's right? valid point and everybody goes was it me was <laughs> was there? well and i find that um it's there's not the stench that you get with eating animal products you don't get with, with mm. eating plants the smell isn't there so basically what i wanted to tell you is lectins are not bad for you right just don't eat raw beans don't eat raw beans 
Don't grind them in a coffee grinder. That's not mm. good. Specifically, kidney beans have been found to be very bad for the human system if they're raw. Right. But pretty much everything else is fine for you. And if someone acts like, if someone is trying to scare you into buying their product, yeah. Be skeptical. Be skeptical. Absolutely. Because there's something going on there. I'm not right. sure why this doctor seemed to decide that this was the direction he wanted to go. Oh, and I know why. Yeah, he wanted to make a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, you saw the price of his supplements. It's terrible. Yeah. It's I mean, terrible. He, well, he's trying to make a lot of money. He probably is, and, too. And, you know, I mean, to me, personally, it's selling your soul for the dollar. It's working for him. Well, we assume it is, yes. But, so the point being... If someone tries to scare you, run. Go look it up. Figure out the figure out the science yourself, or ask me. I was gonna say, or, or send the <laughs> question. Tag me, along. and I'll I'll go I'll go do some research. I have some really trusted sources that I know are right. gonna give me hardcore science. Right. They're not gonna give me scare tactics, and that I trust, and that I trust to be able to share with you guys. Right. So I would say, eat your beans, cook them for at least ten minutes. If they're edible, they're good for you. Exactly. So, I know, did you have anything you wanted to add? I know I showed you the video you too. Me, no, I just found it was interesting. The things I wanted to add were how they manipulate science, you know? I mean, and the funny thing about how he manipulated the science is he actually took something, in this case they're talking about egg yolks, and where it was shown to be negative, he turned it into a positive, which is bizarre to me. Yeah. So he totally ignored what it said, cited it. He cited a study, but said the absolute opposite of, of what, what the study, study said. actually found. And in, I'll tell you why he does that. 99% of the people will not look the study up to see if it backs what he said. They'll just assume that the science right. will Right. So, well, if he's citing it, he must be telling the truth. Right, which and, is and not. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's disappointing. You know, it really is. But, yeah. you know, so all we try to do is share actual information. That's, That's always my goal. Right. So don't worry about lectins. They're good for you. Eat them up. It's all good. Eat your beans. Eat yes. your... Eat your lentils, eat your peas, eat, eat your, your tomatoes, corn. eat the corn. Right. It's all good for you. And, yes, and cook your kidney beans at least 10 minutes. Yeah, well, you can't eat them after 10 minutes anyway. No, so. I've not any bean I've ever had. Yeah. You know? So that's what I wanted to share about um, lectins. They're a, a kind of protein. They're good for you. Eat them. Right. Cook them first. Exactly. All right. All right. Um, if you're getting value out of these, please do like and share them. Don't forget to join our newsletter if you haven't yet. And we will definitely let you know when we're going to be back at the um, natural new, the Newark Natural Food Store yeah. to give our do our talk again. It's tentatively somewhere in the second week of April, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we'll, not sure. We'll, we'll get you the date, there. though. Yes, exactly. Excuse, excuse me. Okay. You all right there, love? Too much. Too, too much turmeric. Turmeric tea. Turmeric. Yes. That's all right. The stuff. All right. And so with that, we will say, <laughs> eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great we'll day. We'll see guys. you tomorrow.